design is moving forward. With the Shopify and 3D button effects, iOS dropped the liquid glass and even FIFA added new glowy animated styles. The buttons are fun again. So in today's video I'm gonna show you three completely different techniques how to level up your buttons, starting with the easiest and ending with my personal favorite. Feel free to pause anytime if you're following along and let's get to it. For the first button we're gonna start with the 3D effects as seen on Shopify. I'm gonna select the text tool and write button. I'll be using the classic font Inter, font size 18, medium and I'm gonna change the text to be white. Next I'm gonna next I'm gonna click shift A to close it with the frame auto layout and give it padding 8 from the top and bottom and 16 from the sides. Next I'm gonna run the corners to 12 pixels and let's fill it with the solid color maybe this purple bluish Let's change the text to white. And to add 3D effect, we're gonna go into effects panel. So let's start with the first effect. The first one I'll be using is the inner shadow with the values of 0, 0, 0 and spread. To, to access the spread, let's make sure we have checked the clip content on the auto layout panel. Let's go back to our inner shadow. And with the spread, let's go with the half opacity on 15%. Next, let's add another inner shadow. This time we want to add the bottom inner shadow. So it's going to be 0, minus 2, 0, 1, and maybe let's change it to 20. So now we have the bottom. Let's go ahead and add the top one. I'm going to go with 0, 4, then 0, minus 1, and this time we're going to change it to white color and opacity 20. Now we're going to do left and right. With the left we're going to go 2, 0, 0, 0, and opacity white on 20%. And now let's do the right. So that's going to be minus 2, 0, 0, 0, white, 20%. And the last but not least, I'm going to add like a massive border around. So this time we're going to use the drop shadow. It's going to be 0, 0, 0, 2. And with the color, I want to use the base color, but with 10% opacity. And let's zoom out. There we go, our 3D button. With these settings, it will work easily on other colors. So let's say we want it black or green, red. The only thing we have to change is the latest drop shadow we added. So that's gonna be our base color with 10% opacity. So the next button we're gonna do is called chrome button. It looks more like the liquid metal effect. There are different ways to achieve this style, but I'm gonna show you the fastest way that will work as well on any other color. This time I'll be starting with frame. And let's say we're gonna do it 120, 40. We're gonna run those corners to maximum and we're gonna fill it with white color and give it a stroke, black, white pixel. Next, I'm gonna close it with auto layout frame, which is shift A, and let's rename that frame into our outer base. Next, I'm gonna duplicate, which is the option D, and rename it into inner base. Inside inner base, we're gonna hit the T, which is the text, and just type a button, and we're gonna place it inside that frame. But before I do that, let's slightly change the size. The fastest way to achieve the ideal padding is to just minus the value. So it's like minus eight. And same here, minus eight. Make sure we have our button in the middle. And we're gonna place it just here. So what we want is the equivalent padding all around. And now we got three pixel padding. Now we're going to select our inner base and we're going to fill it with gradient. 
from top to bottom and I'm gonna use some green color for example this darker at the top and slightly lighter at the bottom next I'm gonna remove the stroke and inside effects we will add inner shadow we're gonna add slight more blur and less opacity maybe three maybe five next let's go to our outer base and this time we're gonna and we also gonna fill it with linear gradient and but this time we're gonna use three stops so we're gonna have our lighter then darker and then lighter again With the stroke, we're going to change the opacity to 20% and let's make it slightly thinner, so 0 0.5. Now let's go into our text and we're going to change the fill to linear gradient again. This time I want to use darker green that goes into more saturated green. And with the effects, we're going to add a drop shadow, 0, 1, 5, opacity, let's change it to 20. The last but not least, I'm gonna select them both, hit Shift A to connect them together, and we're gonna add a drop shadow. So, effects, drop shadow, and we're gonna add way more blur. And we can change our outer base to have like three different colors so it's even look more like a liquid metal. So that was fun, they look cool, but they kind of static. So the next button we're gonna do, I saw on the FIFA 26 release, I think, and I absolutely loved it. I had to recreate it straight away. And I'm gonna show you how. Let's start with a rectangle. I'm gonna use 120, 40, and run the corners to full. I'm gonna rename that layer to be called base, and I'm gonna duplicate it. And the top one I'm gonna make shine. For the base I'm gonna give it a stroke of five just for a moment we're gonna change that in a second. I'm gonna place the shine on top of base. Select them both together and we're gonna click use as a mask. So we have our base, our shine and our mask group. Let's go inside the base. First I'm gonna remove the fill so now you guys can see where was stroke is now stroke on our base. If there was a fill, that would be invisible. Now on the stroke, we're going to go into gradients and I'm going to select the angular. We're going to have four stops. First one is on 0%, then we're going to do 25%, 75% and 90%. We're going to fill it with white color all over and change opacity to 100, 0, 0 and 100. I'm gonna change the stroke to be in the center and change the width to 20. We can change the direction of our stroke whether it's coming from side, bottom or top. For now we're gonna start with bottom and we're gonna make it look more like an egg shape. Next we're gonna add another stroke, same angular, same four stops. This time we're gonna start with five 25, 75 and 95, fill with white, opacity 100, 0, 0, 100 and we're gonna change the shape to look more like a circle. With adding the second stroke it just look a little bit more natural. Now let's go inside our shine. In here instead of fill we're gonna use stroke as well. And as well, we're gonna use the exact same values, just different colors. So we have four stops. And I'm gonna copy the colors I already prepared, which are almost exact same as used on FIFA. So I got this one twice. And then this one twice. For the stops, we're gonna use 10%, 30, 60, 90 and then same as before 100 0 0 100 so that was our first let's make it more into egg shape and now we're gonna add the second angular stroke on top I'm gonna use stops 5 20 60 and 95 with the 100 0 0 100 
but this time we're gonna change the shape to circle. Okay, perfect. Let's now change the stroke size to maybe three to be slightly bigger. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the effect of layer blur. We can adjust how much blurring we want. Um, I think I'm gonna stick to number three. So we got this glowy blur effect that's gonna go around the button ready. Next, I'm gonna turn this into a component. So that's that one, create component and we're gonna create variant. So this is gonna be our bottom variant. Inside our bottom variant, we're gonna add a stroke. Gonna run the corners to full again. And again, we're gonna fill it with the angular gradient. For stops, I'm gonna use 5, 25, 75 and 95. And then the second stroke, I'm gonna use the exact same values, 5, 25, 75, 95, 0, 100. But we're gonna change the shape again. So the first one, which is the bottom part, we have it ready. If we want, we can change the layer blur to be a bit more blurry. Now I'm gonna click the next variant and simply we're gonna reverse it to have the top. So we will go inside each layer and we're gonna twist our angular gradient. Gonna repeat the exact same process in, in each layer. That was easy. The next one we're gonna do the sides. Let's start with the right. I will play with the shapes of the our angular gradient to have the most smooth effects between transition the two different colors and the last but not least is our left perfect now we got that sorted we're gonna go into prototype tab and we're gonna connect all of them together so let's go inside the prototype so we're gonna start with the top connect it to the right i'm gonna use after delay of 50 milliseconds we're gonna change it to the right animation smart animate next linear and let's try 500 gonna repeat that process again after delay 50 next after delay of 50 and last but not least after delay of 15. so now we have our glowy effect animated let's just create the base of the button let me paste it on the football pitch frame perfect for that i'm gonna use text tab button shift a to close it with the auto layout exact same as before i think we did how much is it 40 pixels let's make it 40 120 rounded corners and i'm gonna fill it with the linear gradient lighter blue that goes to darker blue change opacity to 60 percent next i'm gonna add the stroke of a solid color the stroke is 100 percent inside and the last we're gonna add the effect which is the background blur maybe slightly less like free and now we're gonna grab our shine and paste it on top Select both together by holding shift, then shift A to close it with auto layout. Don't worry, we're gonna go inside our side and change position to be absolute. I'm gonna now select the frame and play the prototype. There we go, animated glowy button. And this is how we do two colors glowy button in Figma. And there you have it, three different button techniques that you can use in your next project. Let me know in the comments which one is your favorite and hit subscribe for more. See you next time. Bye.